All right. So again, welcome to everyone um, to this webinar. And thank you for joining us in going through today's topic of mine to mill optimization. Just uh, a little bit of general housekeeping. Um, everybody should be on mute uh, just to prevent any background noises. Uh, we do have a bit to cover um, but again we'll have some time at the end hopefully for a, a short uh, Q&A session um, as we go along through the webinar uh, please write your questions in the Q&A um, chat box which hopefully you'll, you'll see that in the toolbar on the uh, on the bottom of your screen or maybe the top um, we'll also be limiting this presentation to about uh, the one hour mark. Uh, so if we don't get through all of the, the questions that you do have, um, we'll uh, keep a record of them and um, hopefully email, email you some answers uh, later on. So today, the, the purpose um, of this webinar is to demonstrate some of the mine to mill levers uh, using a recent case study that we've performed, uh, just to showcase the benefits of the whole mine to mill process optimization approach. If um, after this webinar you require some more details, um, we do have some previous recordings uh, from, from previous mine to mill webinars. Um, on our YouTube page. So if you uh, go to YouTube and do a search for JK Tech webinar series, you'll be able to find those together with um, a lot of the other webinars that we've produced um, over the years. Um, we also have a lot of uh, training available on the topic as well. So we have our traditional course available as either a, a tailored in-house face-to-face course, or we do also have our generic open course which uh, is available online as self-paced presentations. Uh, so again, if you want more details, just uh, jump onto our website, uh, www.jktech.com.au, um, or alternatively, follow us on, on LinkedIn for, for more details about other training courses as well. So today there'll be uh, two speakers. Um, the first of which is Percy Madrid, who is one of our comminution experts at JK Tech. He's been with us for over 11 years now. Um, and he's one of our resident uh, JK uh, experts performing a lot of uh, the training and, and consulting work that goes with that um, all around the globe. Uh, that also naturally fits in with uh, our mind to mill and also geometallurgical projects, which Percy has um, done quite a few. And then uh, there's myself, Bevan Wong. I'm the operations manager at JK Tech. Uh, been with JK Tech for over um, 10 years now. Uh, look after all of our services and products and time to time get involved in some of our projects from uh, all the way from yeah, the mind to mill side of things to, um, to laboratory style projects as well. We are both metallurgists by trade. Um, so un unfortunately, our drill and blast specialist, Sadat Eason, could not join us today, uh, but uh, he, he works with us. He's got over 20, 25 years of industry experience as a drill and blast expert and has conducted numerous uh, mine to mill products with JK Tech and also in his previous roles in the industry as well. Just a little bit about JK Tech before we uh, begin everything. So JK Tech is a 100% uh, wholly owned entity of the University of Queensland. Uh, the university itself leads and conducts a lot of the, the cutting edge research across the mining value chain, um, covering everything from safety, social responsibility, environment and, and, and water, just to name a few things. But some of the more well-known uh, centers uh, that perform the research in, in our industry are the uh, Julius Kritschnit research, Mineral Research Center and the Bryan Research Center, which uh, does both the processing and the mining and geology research, respectively. JK Tech has been the technology transfer company for, for UQ uh, into the resources industry for um, over 30 years now. And uh, some of our more well-known products that have been commercialized 
um, and have become benchmarks in the industry uh, include JK SimMet and JK SimFloat, uh, which are the comminution and flotation simulation packages um, that we market. Uh, and we also have um, a, a very well-known machine, the JK drop weight tester, uh, which is used um, throughout the industry and has become the benchmark for comminution or characterization as well. Uh, that's pretty much uh, worldwide at, at most um, most laboratories around the world. I think we've got around uh, 50 commercial units and quite a number of uh, in-house units within mining companies as well. A couple of our more uh, recent additions has been the JK VBOC uh, program, value-based ore control, uh, which focuses on the prediction of blast movement uh, post-blast. Uh, to optimize dilution and grade control in the mine. And also JK Milfit, um, which is one of the latest um, technologies developed at the JK MRC. Uh, currently around 30 installations around the globe. It's a, uh, a soft sensor uh, that predicts the charge in uh, SAG or AG mills. Uh, it doesn't require any hardware or instrumentation. Uh, that basically provides a, a live reading um, of the um, the mill load uh, used and can be used for process control and also to inform the operators on what to do. Services wise, uh, we conduct a lot of consulting and training activities um, across the value chain from geology to processing. Um, again, using many of the tools listed uh, on the left. Uh, we do pride ourselves on being fully independent, so we're not aligned to any vendor or supplier, um, and consider that we always utilize uh, best practice methodologies in all of our work as well. We do have an in-house uh, laboratory that complements our consulting work. Uh, it also offers a lot of uh, commercial or characterization test work but it is the vast uh, databases in uh, test work and operational data that we've collected over the years that really underpins all that we do uh, that leads to a lot of the, um, the modeling inputs for, for JK SimMet, JK SimFlow, and a lot of the benchmarking um, that we utilize in the rest of our services. Okay, so let's get started on the topic of uh, mind mill. I'll uh, take you through a brief introduction to the origins and, and philosophy. Um, and then Percy will take us through some of the key levers uh, together with um, a more recent case study uh, to demonstrate their benefits. So the mine to mill formally, sort of more formally started in the, the mid nineties. Um, it was, yeah, sort of at, at the JKMRC. So the JKMRC were very well known, had a very strong group in uh, comminution, but also a strong group in blasting as well. The comminution group knew that things like feed size distribution affected mill performance, and the blasting research group knew that fragmentation or feed size distribution um, could be changed by blasting. But these two research groups pretty much worked in their silos um, at the office in Brisbane. It wasn't until around 1996 that the Amira P483 project started uh, with the aim to understand the impact of blast fragmentation on sag mill performance. And all of the focus was really on blast fragmentation modeling and measurement. And then in 1998, the very first mine to mill conference was held um, where the JKMRC researchers presented their uh, first research case studies on, on the topics. And uh, the first one of these was at the Highland Valley copper operation uh, in Canada. Uh, and that was to understand and resolve why the mill throughput had dropped. So really what happened at this mine? It's very simple, really. Um, the mine increased their whole diameters and designed uh, bigger bigger patterns, bigger blast patterns to reduce the drilling and blasting costs. Um, BFM, it's um, yeah. cutting out a bit. Oh, sorry. Hopefully you'll come Thank back. you. That's good. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, so let me repeat that. So what, what happened at Highland Valley Copper 
Um, the mine increased their hole diameters and designed uh, bigger blast patterns to reduce the drilling and blasting costs. This resulted in the mill throughput dropping by about 8%. So how was this resolved? Well, the mine went back to its normal patterns and throughput was restored. Um, there was also a lot of improvements in blasting practices and a lot of other optimization, which increased their throughput by another 10%. So a very simple case study, um, simple thing to be done, but, um, and you know, look, this is still happening in our, in our industry at the moment. So at most operations, optimization is traditionally done in their silos, which contains a lot of downsides. Breaking up a bit again, sorry. One of the most common silos is the mine. So at most operations, the optimization is done in silos. Um, and one of these obviously is the mine and the other silo is the mill. Generally, they're under very different management structures and reporting systems. Uh, they have different KPIs and cost centers as well. So as per the Highland Valley example provided, uh, on many occasions, you'll hear how the mine has saved costs by using less explosives, only for the mill to receive much larger rocks and uh, causing lower throughput. So within each of these, groups. Um, there are also the individual processes that also have their own production targets and cost budgets where individuals will endeavor to, to meet these. Um, there's also often a focus on quantity rather than quality uh, with little understanding on the impact on other processes and overall value. A good example of this is when a contract company is used to operate the, uh, the crusher. They are usually paid on how many tons they process. So what do they do? What are the times? They just open the gap to let everything flow through. These sorts of KPIs don't encourage anyone to understand uh, the risks and to maximize the overall value. Um, other downsides across the, uh, the whole chain usually involve uh, having inadequate systems to really measure the outcomes in a, in a reliable and a, and a timely manner. Um, and there's obviously, obviously a lot of inadequate uh, communication between the different processes to understand the interactions and changes that are occurring as well. So how do we overcome all these downfalls in traditional optimization? Well, it is uh, in the whole mine to mill philosophy. Uh, look at the whole value chain, not just the mine and the mill, like really what has been commoditized over the years. Um, our approach incorporates these, but as well as expanding all of this into all the other areas on the mine, such as mine planning, um, blast movement, but also thinking about further downstream in, in dewatering um, and even waste as well. So I'm just going to pass on to Percy now, um, who will take us through some of the, the key levers you can use within the mind to mill philosophy. Thank you, Bevin. Uh, good afternoon with everyone. Uh, Percy Madrid here. Um, uh, yes, certainly, uh, mind to mill has become a widely used approach to process integration in the mining and uh, minerals processing industry. So there is this perception, though, that mine to mill is all about producing finer blast fragmentations. Finer blast fragmentations are only needed in the right circumstance. And this is what I want to show today with some real life application. So since there is uh, plenty of mine to mill case studies around showing the impact of finer blast fragmentations alone on combination circuit performance, so I'll be discussing on the various levers for process integration, as Bevan mentioned, and then I'll be elaborating a bit more on what we call mine to mill the next phase, incorporating soft sensors to the methodology for better insights. Um, in particular, three developments at the University of Queensland, uh, the JK Value-Based Ore Control, or JK VBOC, uh, the JK Dynamic Stockpile Model, and the JK mill filling inference tool uh, or JK mill fit.
So the original mind domain philosophy focused on blast fragmentation as the main lever for process integration, the bottlenecking sag wheels and creating room for concentrated throughput increases. At JKMRC and JK Tech, this philosophy has evolved over, over the years to include additional levers of process integration to suit the needs and realities of any mine site, because not all combination circuits are constrained by the sag wheel. Hence, not all combination circuits or mine sites will benefit from more aggressive blasting. So this is a case study, large cooperation in Peru and Tomina. Um, I just wanted to show uh, the importance uh, of ore characterization. Um, so this is some uh, ore characteristics that are relevant for combination. And we are talking about two uh, tests, the JK drop by test or SMC test that provides a number of work indices, uh, including the AIM times B value on the Y axis in this graph. Uh, that represents the uh, ore competency to sag milling with lower values uh, indicating higher uh, ore competencies to sag milling and the other way around low HSV values representing hard, um, very, very uh, hard uh, ores uh, to or highly resistant to impact breakage. Uh, the ore uh, relevant uh, ore characteristics uh, has to do with the bold milling, which is a secondary grinding stage. Uh, we measure that with the uh, bone bone mill work index. So here we have a number of um, points. They correspond to uh, samples where the two tests have been conducted. Uh, so this is a particular ore characterization campaign uh, conducted in 2018 uh, at Antamina, um, where you can see uh, the spread, which is natural variability. But something to highlight in here is that um, the ore characteristics have shifted over the years to become uh, softer for sag milling. Um, so this uh, purple circle here is representing um, what um, the ore characteristics uh, were when the mill was uh, designed, or the mills were designed. So the mills uh, were uh, selected as well as the installed power selected based on this um, ore harness or ore characteristics often represented by the 80th percentile of HSV and bone work index. So over the years, the ore has become softer, uh, primarily for the uh, HSV value. So the shift to a higher HSV uh, resulted in sag mills being oversized for the current ore properties. Despite the throughput increase, obviously with softer ore, you get um, higher throughputs. Uh, despite these throughput increases, purely due to the ore competency. The process is energy inefficient, inefficient since it's using oversized sag mills for the duty. So uh, here I just wanted to show you uh, some performance metrics comparing two ore campaigns. Uh, at Antamina, this is a, a typical SABC circuit. Uh, it includes two uh, lines of uh, sag mills and four lines of ball mills. Um, two uh, ore campaigns with the baseline uh, blasting and the intensive blasting. So each of them um, took 12 hours of continuous operations. Um, so as we can see here, uh, the image analysis systems uh, got to capture the final feed of uh, the second trial, the intensive blasting. And this was also captured by other analysis uh, before the combination plant. So the image analysis system uh, feeding the plant uh, really uh, capture that uh, difference in, in, in coarseness. Uh, as a result, obviously, the combined throughput was uh, slightly higher for the second um, uh, ore campaign, as you can see here. And that was also reflected in a lower generation of recycling pebbles. And because the material was very soft and, 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 and fine, obviously the mill uh, power was not very high. So this uh, is the average uh, sag mill power of the two lines. Uh, I should mention they have uh, 20 megawatts installed power on each sag mill. Um, with the baseline blasting, they got just about 15, uh, 15 megawatts uh, of power draw. Whereas with the finer material, this was even lower. 
uh, just under 14 megawatts average uh, signal power with the uh, fine feed uh, or campaign. Again, each or campaign took 12 hours. Um, uh, here we have the average uh, sack meal filling uh, reading for the 12 hours for each or campaign, very consistent with the uh, power draws um, in the first or campaign. Uh, average meal filling was around 24%. For the second one was just and above uh, 20%. Um, as a result of having a very low, um, as a result of having very soft or very fine, or obviously uh, residence time in the sack mill was uh, much shorter. Uh, and the reason why we have uh, meal filling inference tools uh, readings uh, or sack mill, sack mill filling readings is because we um, set up the uh, JK meal filling inference tool to these two sack mills to monitor during all these or campaigns. Uh, this was the difference in, 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 in volume power, average volume power was slightly higher for the second campaign where um, the ore was much uh, finer. And as a result, um, the final grind size of the two ore campaigns, we got a, a coarser final grind size with the softest material. And this is due to two reasons. I will be elaborating on the following uh, slides, but the main two reasons for this coarser grind size is, number one is a slightly higher throughput, and number two, the lower mill filling, which means uh, lower or shorter residence time, not enough time to, to generate more grinding and, and hence more fines generation. That's also um, um, resulting in a coarser final grind size, as you can see. Two or campaigns of two 12 hours each, sagmill uh, sag power uh, is underutilized, as you can see, install power is 20 megawatts. With one campaign, we have uh, just about 15 megawatts. With the other one, finer fit, we got, we got just under 14 megawatts. So softer, softer or fine ore leads to lower sag mill filling and lower sag mill power, and that leads to coarser grinding and, and lower flotation recovery. Uh, so under this circumstance, blasting finer uh, will not be the right thing to do, as we are just um, getting uh, a very low mill fillings in the sack mill. And we will, we will show how that is energy inefficient. So the second lever for process integration um, has to do with the or, or characteristics or the or characterization. Key to an effective ore characterization is to capture the differences in ore competency across the deposit with the test results exhibiting good correlations with blast fragmentation and mill throughput. If this is not achieved, either the test use is unsuitable or the number of measurements is insufficient. This, this is a JK drop by tester. On the left, you, go, you have the schematic of the test uh, machine. And this one here in the middle uh, is the picture of a real uh, drop by tester. As you can see, as, as Barry mentioned, um, the test has become the uh, a, a standard in the a, or the, the benchmark in the industry uh, for uh, ore characterization. So the test was uh, designed to replicate the breakage mechanisms uh, and the energy levels that rocks experience inside sack mills or crushers, with more than 45 commercial laboratories around the world uh, conducting the test. So with drop by test and SMC, we can measure the, uh, the ore specific uh, resistance to impact breakage or the ore competency to sack milling. So what we have in here is the um, JK Tech database for A times B values uh, as measured by the drop by or SMC test as an indicator of ore competency to sack milling. Um, the JK Tech database with more than 6,000 drop by test results and more than 70,000 SMC test results um, from tests conducted over the past 30 years. Good agreement between HMC and rank of mine particle size distribution in the JK Tech database. What you see here is um, selection 
of rank of mind particle size distributions from various sites from the JK Tech database with associated A times B values. Um, the the full rank of mind particle size distribution don't get to get uh, don't get to to be measured very often at sites only when uh, projects of uh, process integration projects um, are conducted. Uh, this actually is the core scent uh, taken from image analysis and the fine end from uh, bell cats are the primary crusher product. Uh, since primary crushers do not crush, do not generate too much fines. It's just dealing with the top size. So we can build, uh, we can put together the fine end from primary crusher product and the course end from um, the image analysis on the rank of mine material. And we can build all these curves. And we have observed like this consistency. We expect core for rocks to come with harder materials. And we expect finer materials or finer rocks to come with very soft rocks. Uh, and this is what this um, bunch of curves are um, indicating uh, with a very fine material. Uh, H and B is very low, very, very high, indicating very low um, resistance to impact breakage, uh, whereas the very low values of H and B represent the harder materials, the very competent rocks to sack milling, and that's um, um, the very coarse uh, rank of mine uh, particle size distributions. So where are the opportunities um, in, the, in the sack mill when we try to uh, integrate the processes uh, what we see here is uh, frequency distributions of sat mill power uh, at a particular mine site. This is not Antamina. Here I just want to um, uh, illustrate what we are talking about. Um, the opportunities are generally in uh, the ore blending. Uh, all, what we, all, all we want is to narrow down the fit harness variability. Uh, and that will bring stability to final grind size for consistent flotation recovery. But again, this is subject to an effective or characterization. Um, so blast fermentation would be needed on the hardest rocks that are represented in this side of this frequency distribution. Uh, if we apply finer blast fermentation to all materials, we will certainly get um, very empty salt mills um, um, for the current um, grade discharge uh, arrangements in the salt mill. And also uh, the opportunities are in an improved process control, maximizing sag mill power utilization, accounting for liner wear in the sag mills, uh, fillings, estimations for a high resolution picture on the actual operating limits. Alternative or characterization tests. So we can have, for example, um, other tests. This can be um, point load or UCS or any other test or proxies that you, you have for hardness. Um, they are not to be used for mill design. They are just um, there to capture some uh, or hardness variability. I have this example here. There is a number of measurements on this test. Uh, it's called well, softness index, uh, it can be called. Um, we have, say, the depth of uh, the sample uh, in the pit. Um, so we can get all this noise with um, tests that are not very exhaustive when it comes to apply the energy or the particle size selection for the test. Uh, so we get very noisy data. Um, so for example, on this uh, top of the, of, the, of the pit, we can get an average around 45 or 50, but if we get the last bit at the very deep of that mine, average using this measurement can be between 55 and 60. Uh, but it really comes to um, taking averages to see whether the test has captured the differences in, in our harness. Uh, and it also comes to uh, statistical representativeness. Uh, uh, for example, if you get only one sample uh, using this test, you might pick the wrong one, like here. And then uh, on this other material, you probably get this one here, and you get exactly the opposite trend in hardness. So it's all about recognizing uh, the noise in the test measurements. Uh, and this is something that drop by test and SMC tests do uh, very well. And the reason for that is um, the very high control on the energy that uh, the test applies and the particle size selection for the test as well. 
Uh, so that's not as exhaustive on other alternative uh, or characterization tests. Hence, they bring noise. So how can we deal with that noise? By taking more measurements. So uh, a lot of tests fall into this category where you really need to conduct more tests um, a, to try to overcome that uh, noise. So another lever for process integration is obviously oral control. Uh, and one of the developments at the University of Queensland is a value-based oral control or VBOG. Um, I have here a couple of videos. On the left, a real blast. Um, uh, on the right, uh, the representation of the same blast uh, using VBOG, uh, where you can see uh, on these red-ish uh, areas representing the higher grade zones within the blast polygon. Uh, I'll just give it a play. So the final form of the magpie has been uh, fitted on VBOG using the uh, survey uh, collected uh, after the blast on the real uh, on the real blast. So basically, um, JK VBOG value based or control is a, a state of the art software to track the blast induced three dimensional displacement of the or waste boundaries. The objective is to minimize the or loss and the dilution. One of the most important labors for process integration is hydrocyclone classification efficiency. So here we have uh, efficiency curve um, on the hydrocyclone. X axis is particle size feeding the hydrocyclone. Y axis is the fraction to fines. Um, as we know, uh, the sharper the curve that we obtain with the real operating cyclones, the more efficient the classification is. And with that, when we get that, we actually provide flotation with a more narrow size range, which as you can see on this graph on the right, so the, the finest and the coarsest size fractions are often associated to uh, lower flotation recoveries. So by producing a sharper cut in the hydrocyclone, we are uh, feeding this flotation circuit with less mass on these two extremes in size uh, distribution, which is uh, again often uh, associated to lower flotation recovery. So all, all the levers for process integration have one thing in common. They come from understanding the real impact of, the, um, of this process in the downstream processes. Um, it really is, mind to me, it really is recognizing the value chain as a sequence of processes where each one of them has an impact in the downstream process. It is all about identifying the bottlenecks. All processes have a bottleneck. As you bottleneck here, you, do, you hit another bottleneck and so on. It makes more sense though that the bottleneck is at the most capital intensive piece of equipment uh, in our circuit and that's often the sat mill. So we can't afford having the bottleneck in a conveyor or, or a pump or, or a tank. So in here, I just want to um, start uh, showcasing some of these uh, new developments at the University of Queensland, this particular one, the JK Dynamic Stockpile Model, uh, which is um, uh, uh, one of the soft sensors. So as you can see here, um, researchers at the JK MRC have developed the dynamic uh, model of course, or stockpiles and or beans also applicable to rompats for tracking or movement and its properties such as grade and particle size. The model considers the feeding of ore such as from a conveyor and the flow of material on the surface of the pile as material tries to maintain an angle of repose, including segregation by size that cause the periphery of the pile to become coarser. The model allows for extraction of ore from several draw points and the rate of draw affects how material works its way through the pile towards the discharge feeders. An important 
application of the model is for tracking geometallurgical data from the mine through the mill feed where it can be used to optimize the plant process control. So each color here, and you can, you can see the, the color in this scale here um, is referring to particle size, PAD size, uh, but also can be associated to head grade. So this is an application of the JK dynamic uh, model on a ROM path, for example, and this is a video, so you can actually visualize this a, a lot better. So this was a topic for uh, last month uh, JK text uh, webinar uh, by Marco, Dr. Marco Hilton. Uh, that, that video is already available on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find the link at our um, LinkedIn uh, profile, JK text LinkedIn profile. Okay, so bearing pressure is not the same as charge mass, and it's not the same as mill filling. So here is where um this is kind of an introduction to the soft sensor for um, inferring the sag mill filling. So bearing pressure is not the same as charge mass, and it's not the same as mill filling. So this is a thirty-eight foot sag mill. Um, the charge mass is around six hundred or seven hundred and fifty tons. Um, the charge mass difference from 18 to 30 percent mill filling at 14 percent ball load is about 200 tons. Uh, the liner mass loss is between 160 180 tons towards um, the end of the mine uh, of the of the liner lifetime. So bearing pressure is not me measuring the mass. Bearing pressure is the response to weight to charge weight, but the bearing pressure does not really differentiate from liner mass loss, charge mass, or um, the, the, the charge mass difference from different mill fillings. So it's going to get the entire mass. So we need to really distinguish what is really the mass. So the error in estimating mill filling can be huge when using an uncalibrated bearing pressure or not correcting for the liner mass loss as they were. The JK mill fit is a soft sensor calibrated to infer the mill filling in real time. So how is mill filling measured? So answer to this is internal inspections. It takes time to, to probably three, four, six hours, depending on the procedures on site, have to stop the feed, shut down, remove the feed, shoot, complete safety procedures. Internal inspection, you can speed up with three dimensional scanning, uh, then put the, the fit shoot back and run the mill. You can just uh, take uh, three to six hours doing that. So this is the uh, JK mill filling inference tool. This is a soft sensor to monitor um, sack mill filling in real time. So this is a timeline. Uh, in here we have a reline or inspection uh, on the sack mill. Uh, so we have known liner weight, known internal dimensions, known ball load. And then for any given time, we use the liner wear models to estimate liner weight, to estimate internal dimensions for that given time. And the ball wear model and additional rate to estimate the ball load for that given time. We have the measure mill speed for that given time. We have the measure percent solids and RSG for that given time and the measure bearing pressure all of which fit uh, the ball, uh, the sack mill power model to match the power, the measure power draw. So we really infer the sack mill filling. So we match with all the measure on estimated variables or drivers of sack power. We, want, we match the same measure power by inferring the mill filling. We basically back calculate mill filling since the laws of physics apply every single second. Um, so this is how the mill can estimate the mill filling uh, by inferring it uh, at any time. Um, so with all these estimations um, or calculations, um, they are all linked to the bearing pressure. And we can, at any given time, estimate how much water, how much rocks, and how much uh, balls, steel balls, our total charge is made up uh, of. Um, this is, for example, 25% uh, mill filling, 
and 16% ball load, we get um, 610 tons of the total charge with this breakdown on a 38 foot segment. So this information can be obtained every minute or every second. So the value proposition uh, is process control. So we really want to take the most out of the sack mill since the sack mill is the most, probably one of the most capital intensive piece of equipment in, in our circuit. So we want to go from unstable power with large variance to consistent power and small variance, maximizing the sack mill power utilization. Uh, sites often operate sack mills conservatively very conservatively due to the limited information available online. Accurate mill filling information online will be key for operators to take the most out of the, out of the sack mill. So why is sack mill filling important? Very quickly. Um, so there is two main breakage mechanisms uh, uh, going on inside sack mills, impact and abrasion. abrasion on this kidney shape region in the sag mill. And this is uh, where this, the fines are generated. Um, really uh, higher mill fillings promote more fines generation. So sag mill filling is important because it drives power consumption. With low mill fillings, we get low mill power consumptions. With higher mill fillings, we get mm, higher uh, power consumptions. But also with low mill fillings, we get poor fines generation. With higher mill fillings, you get more fine generation. And also with very low mill fillings, there is an accelerated liner wear. So the uh, mill liners and, uh, are more protected with higher mill fillings. So with higher mill fillings, we win uh, for all this power, more fine generation and, and liners are more protected from wear. So, this just brings us back to this slide with the performance metrics for these uh, two ore campaigns that I showed you earlier. So this is just to show you the power of having accurate sack mill fillings um, readings for these 12 hours period each. As you can see here, the much finer material resulted in a slightly higher throughput, but because it was very soft and fine, um, it produced a much lower sack power because of the lower, much lower uh, mill filling. This means two variables affect the coarser final grain size. One is a slightly higher throughput, but number two, very important, the shorter resonance time given by the lower mill filling uh, that did not uh, promote too much fine generations. So then transfer size to the ball milling is coarser and the ball mills get a coarser uh, final growing size. And these uh, negatively affect flotation performance. What you see here is actually real combination performance for a range of ore competencies. So this is um, the effect of sack mill filling, as you can see on the X axis here. And then you can see variables like uh, mill throughput, power draw and cyclone overflow PAT. Um, so this is for a range of all competencies. They all come from uh, 12 hours or campaigns. And there is a lot of uh, consistency in this data. Um, as you can see, uh, four operating scenarios were captured as part of the highly monitored or campaigns in 2021. And they are trial one, trial two, three, and four here. Uh, so they were all conducted at a given or um, HSV values or characteristics. And the mill filling that was average for that time windows are also on the in this x-axis. Um, so this was part of the of the support, uh, continued support of JK Tech with this mindset that resulted in additional service conducted earlier this year. Um, one of them actually uh, was here. Um, that M1 survey, uh, M1 is the one of the ore uh, domains over there. Um, that this particular survey conducted this year expanded the range of operating scenarios to the softest end, which was great. Uh, this was only one hour average um, the operation, whereas the other columns here are 12 hours each. And we really get consistency. 
as you can see with the harder materials, we get uh, higher meal fillings. Um, and then as we have higher meal fillings, we get um, higher power draws in the circle, but because the ore is harder, the throughput drops, as you can see, but also the final grind size drops. And the reason why uh, final grind size drops is because with very hard rocks, um, high meal fillings, we get lower throughput. And with lower throughput, you can manage to get um, very fine uh, final grind size. Whereas with the very soft rocks, um, you get very low meal filling, very high throughput, as you can see, but also very coarse grind size. Because again, two things, high throughput and coarser transfer sizes to bulk milling caused by the low meal fillings in the sack that uh, is actually representing shorter resistance times in the, shop, in the, in the sack mill. Uh, less abrasion breakage is promoted um, so it came to a surprise to many uh, on site that this survey conducted this year was actually covering this end. So they pretty much now have this real combination circuit performance for a range of all competency, and they are all real. They are not model predicted, um, and that's the beauty. Uh, data consistency for three reasons. One is the period, uh, representative 12 hours or campaigns each except the, this one here, this was only one hour, all the other four were 12 hours. Uh, meaningful or characterization, agents B, um, and then accurate sack meal filling. So this is where uh, real data meets with first principles. And having uh, much better data quality really helps to uh, put together all various pieces and then get this picture, pretty much all the, uh, all the, um, all the resources, all the uh, block model is summarized here um, for a range of all harnesses. Uh, it's just up to the side to uh, keep investing on our characterization to see where, where they sit in this matrix. And hence, this is obviously the basis for a, for a throughput model uh, for, for, for this site. Uh, just coming to one end, I uh, just have a couple more of these slides. Um, so agency value. So at Antamina, they have uh, they see the value in, in dropout SMC test results, H and B, that they are measuring it, but they are also using proxies to H and B. So collecting uh, drilling chips uh, from selected uh, blast holes, and, the, and then the samples were selected, uh, selected and they, they conducted uh, well SMC on the on the big samples, but on the drilling chips uh, they con uh, we conducted uh, JKRBT light. Uh, which is a rapid sm a small scale or characterization test at JK, and then assays on a suite of elements. Alternative tests uh, such as UCS and point load. Uh, then Antamina developed proxies to uh, A and B based on geochemical data. And as part of the project, uh, JK had to dem demonstrate the value of SMC test. Uh, so we conducted a statistical assessment on the utility of each test to capture the differences in our competency. So Antamina to conduct routine and meaningful ore characterization to capture the differences in ore hardness across the deposit. So this is what uh, we call the mine to mill the next phase, um, where we really um, want to, we want sites to really uh, conduct mine to mill on a sustained way. Um, it's often the case where um, consultants come, conduct mine to mill, benefits are um, observed in the short terms. However, when um, conditions change anywhere in the mine value chain over time, then sites do not know. Uh, it's It becomes an, uh, a challenge to keep integrating uh, the process. So the JK Tech philosophy is more like um, recommending sites to keep conducting or characterization so they can always have better insights um, on, and also keep tracking um, the impact of our characteristics on mine value change performance. Um, the addition of the three uh, developments at the, uh, at the University of Queensland, which is the JK VBOC, value-based or control here, 
um, then the dynamic uh, stockpile model and the mill fit uh, really integrate with other existing um, systems in the value chain to track uh, the impact of or characteristics on value chain uh, performance. So just wrapping up um, before we, we close, um, mind to me the next phase. So get the most out of the SAP mill since it is uh, one of the most capital intensive pieces of equipment in the value chain. If current or characterization is not capturing the differences in our competency across the deposit, Either the test use is unsuitable or the number of measurements is insufficient. Keep conducting routine and meaningful oral characterization and tracking its impact on combination performance. Monitor sagmill filling and its effects on power utilization and final grind size. With these insights, mind sites will always know which levers to pull to leverage process integration as the mind value chain conditions change over time. JK VBOC and the JK dynamic stockpile model unlock opportunities to take or track into the next level. Their interaction with the JK mill fit will leverage process control and will enable the development of uh, digital twins. Um, I think that was covering all what I had for today, Bevin, uh, over to you. Okay, thanks, Percy. So um, yeah, look, again, just to wrap up today's session, uh, I'll just summarize a few key takeaways, which I hope everyone uh, online has realized as well. Um, so again, I hope everyone realizes that traditional optimization um, it, of individual processes in mining might not result in optimum improvement. Um, Mind Mill is, is about optimizing the entire process by understanding all of these individual processes, the bottlenecks and um, the levers that you do have available to, to pull um, in order to optimize. Done together, this will you know, result in uh, significant uh, cost reductions or improved throughput and just overall benefits to uh, the operation. Understanding the variability in, in all, all hardness is, uh, is key, as is mentioned um, a lot by Percy, but also fragmentation, uh, blast movement and um, wall, wall control or damage um, is very critical to the success of uh, these optimization projects. But it does require uh, a lot of test work, a lot of measurements and detailed analysis. So you've got to be really willing to, to put in that sort of effort um, at the end of the day. But yep, one of the most um, important um, things is it's all about sustainability. So it is, is one of the biggest downfalls of, of this whole process. Um, you need to have the buy-in from all of site. So um, a lot of times we might get engaged by uh, the processing group, for instance, but there isn't buy-in from the mining group or um, or vice versa. So it is a, a journey that you need to take um, the whole mine site um, on in order to uh, fully optimize everything. Once a project is is completed as well, you know it's it's pretty much all about continuous um, professional training. Uh, maybe you do some site visits or remote support by um, again third party companies just to to make sure you're um, you know once you've implemented things that they they do keep on going. Um, but again, oh, sitting over all of this, uh, we, we've talked very you know technically, but there is that overarching. Um, key of uh, change management and accountability of of all of this that um, also goes along with with these types of projects. Um, not not something that uh, we do within JK Tech, but you know we work with a group called uh, First Principles Consulting to support in this area and, and um, I guess deal with the the people um, side of things uh, that need to go on on a on a mine site. Overall. Mind to mill, it never never ends. Uh, something will always change, whether you know it or or not. Um, so it is very important to to make sure you're monitoring uh, key KPIs, um, and you've got tools and and other actions are in place just to ensure that uh, the philosophy is 
embedded in everybody on, on your mind side. So that uh, closes out this, um, this webinar. Um, we will open the, um, I guess the floor to any questions.